Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's Taylor Smith and I am going to follow up on my Corvette project that has been sitting now for over one year. So come along and check it out. So the last video I posted on the Z06, I was pulling the engine out of this and getting ready for a heads cam project. And uh, yet again, life got in the way. I got busy with work, sidetracked with other cars. And uh, anyways, here is the engine. It is all assembled today and I am going to cut to some quick clips that I've taken over the past year of tinkering with this engine and then I'll catch back up with you at the end of the video to current day. Alrighty guys, well it's been a little while since I've done an update on the Corvette, but I have the whole engine disassembled, the cam is out, all the timing accessories, the oil pump, and I did get the pistons all cleaned up. I uh, just knocked all the carbon off the tops of them, got uh, rags in the other holes here, and I've got it at top dead center right now, and I'm ready to stab the cam in this thing. I'm going to regasket the whole engine, so I've got the rear cover off as well, and I'll be putting a new rear main seal in. Um, but uh, right now I'm getting ready to put the cam in. I've got some assembly lube. You can see here I also cleaned up the deck surfaces. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this cam installed, and then we'll start throwing our front timing. Alrighty guys, we've well, got the cam in there. I used some assembly lube on it. Um, because I'm not planning on starting this for a couple more weeks before I get it in the car. So we've got some assembly lube coating the cam and the cam bearings. I, this is a Cloy ZR timing set and it has three different keyways for install. So you can advance it, retard it, or install it straight up. This is the straight up setting here. So we're at top dead center right now. You can see that our button on the cam there, I kind of uh, put a little Sharpie on either of them so you can see them. Um, those are both lined up. I went ahead and rotated the engine over just to make sure that nothing was scraping. And then you can see back there, there's actually a little Torrington bearing that actually rides right on this inner machine face of the cam gear and rides against or, or kind of just sits against that uh, cam plate just so it's got a really nice tolerance and rolls freely. Really nice timing set on here. So all of this is tight and ready to go. The next thing to do is the oil pump. Before I get the oil pump on, I just wanted to show it to you guys a little in depth. This is the LS9 pump that was ported by Tony Mamo. And you can see really nice port job in this thing. The orifices are much larger than the factory LS7 pump with this port job. So uh, this is gonna help with the demand of oil from the Johnson lifters that we're installing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of clean this thing up real quick and install it on the engine. All right, well, I got the engine all uh, taped up here on the deck surface just to keep the dust out. I have been busy. I put the timing set or timing cover back on it, RTV'd the corners front and rear, put a new front uh, crankshaft seal in it, new oil pan gasket, and a new gasket out back on the rear cover along with a new rear main seal. And uh, everything's pretty much cleaned up now and ready to install the cylinder head. Don't do Go ahead and clean the lifters with brake cleaner and then soak them in oil before I install them just so everything's nice and lubricated. And then here are the Mamo Motorsports MMS 265 heads. As you can see, these things are absolutely beautiful. Got our valve spring upgrade on this thing for the big camshaft we're putting in it. And uh, I've got my lash caps right over here. Got my push rod length checkers. That'll be the next step after installing everything. As you can see, Pretty cool looking heads in here. Actually it has a pretty good camera angle with the iPhone. You can see the big intake valve there and uh, really nice port work by Tony throughout these heads. These things are going to make some serious power. And then you can see the valve upgrades that we did. So really nice stuff, top of the line build on these heads and I cannot wait to get them on the car. All right, so I got the first set of Johnson lifters all cleaned up, just got a little of the dust off from the cardboard box that came in. Really nice lifters. These are the, let's see here, ST2126LSR. Um, these are short travel with dedicated axle oiling. Very nice lifters, top of the line for the GM LS engine. So basically I've got like a little water bottle that I cut off. I'm gonna just soak the lifters and then drop them right in. You see I've got all this blown out with the air compressor and cleaned up with brake clean. So I'm gonna start dropping these in now. Alrighty, so you can see all the lifters are in their bores. Everything slid in perfectly. And I just put that oil on there just so that they would be well lubricated going down into the lifter bores. Uh, I've got the deck surface cleaned up and completely dust free at the moment. 
and um, basically just going to be going through here, cleaning up these brand new ARP bolts. They say to clean off all of the little uh, residue that comes on them. And then I'll be lubricating the threads with their ultra torque fastener lube. And then also the heads of the bolts down beneath here so that I can get a totally accurate torque uh, throughout all of these. So I'm gonna get to this busy work. So the next time you see this, there will be a head gasket and cylinder head on this engine for the first time in about two months. All right, guys. Well, a little bit of time has passed since the last uh, video clip, but I have gotten all of the push rods installed, torqued all of the fasteners for the rocker arms here, bank one and bank two. And I'll just briefly just talk about uh, the push rod length measuring. Um, Tony sent me these comp cams length checkers. They're both adjustable. So basically I went through uh, with his direction, measured each push rod independently intake and exhaust for all 16 valves. Um, we got all of these measurements here on the left and then Tony grouped them together. You see like he grouped together the ones that were close so that we didn't have this many different sizes. And then uh, here is all of the uh, lengths that that translated to per cylinder. So we've got cylinders one through eight. I just finished up going through and installing all of those. The Manton push rods are really nice. I actually should have shown you those before I put them in. You can see they're really nice hardened push rods with a uh, heavy duty tip on them either side. Obviously. Alrighty, well we're back up to current day. And uh, anyways, I'm finally getting ready to do the last couple of things I need to do to get the engine in the car. Uh, the first of which is I need to pull this radiator out of here. I moved the, uh, pull the front bumper cover off. I'm going to pull this little um, impact styrofoam out just for some clearance for the engine hoist. I'll pull this out just so I have tons of room for working in here to drop the engine in. I'll be replacing the slave cylinder and the throw out bearing. And then I also got a remote clutch bleed uh, piece here. Got some junk all over the workbench, so I'm going to be installing this remote bleeder. It's very hard to bleed the slave cylinders on these cars when the engine is in or the torque tube or transmission is in. Um, so I'll be installing that, and then let's see, I've got the uh, new slave right here with this uh, billet throw-out bearing. Very nice stuff. So I'll uh, show you what I've been up to while this car's been sitting for a year. So in addition to collecting a few more cars from my personal hoard of stuff, I also, uh, through my business, bought and sold 65 cars last year, which kept me incredibly busy, and that's why all my personal stuff was on the back burner. Uh, my wife and I also had another baby in August of 2021, so that has made things incredibly busy as well. So here I am finally getting caught up on my personal things, so I'll show you a couple of the new acquisitions here. I just got this car from my wife actually in uh, February of 2022. This is an O, or not O, it's a 2014 ML63 AMG with uh, 50,000 miles. I got this car in Portland, Oregon for her and drove it back. We replaced uh, her old Subaru that she had, which was also a very nice car. Um, but this is uh, definitely a sporty mom vehicle. Uh, 560 something horsepower twin turbo V8, so probably too cool for a uh, mom vehicle, but I needed to be excited about buying an SUV if I was gonna get one at all. Uh, this car here is a 2007 Porsche 997 twin turbo. This is a factory six speed car that I bought in January or February of 2021. Uh, these wheels are rather obnoxious. I got a good deal on them and decided to put them on, but I also have the factory wheels. So I have videos on this car from the last year. And then this is a really, really special car over here. This is a 1987 Porsche 911 930 Turbo with 31,000 original miles. But uh, also a lot of other videos on this that I have saved on my phone. I just have to get down to editing them and posting them for you guys. But this was like a huge milestone in life for me to acquire a 930 Turbo. And uh, anyways, I'll get into that in later videos on why a 930 means so much to me. Well, that's gonna conclude today's video. If you've made it this far, you know, really appreciate you guys for stopping by today. Uh, just a quick update on life and why I've been MIA for yet another year. I was making a video a year ago about how I hadn't made a lot of videos in the year prior. So 
I really, I do want to make videos consistently and actually make this into a thing, but uh, life just keeps getting in the way, or at least that's what I keep telling myself. So anyways, I hope you guys are doing well and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.